Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Emiliano from Hammer and Ravens here, and um, today I needed to take a break from uh, working on the UIs, and I want to show you a bit of the the progress that we are having in the main map. I'm showing a lot of pictures in the last weeks, but uh, I'm not showing really anything animated or happening. This is the where the main campaign of Empires in Ruins takes place. Uh, this is where the plot and the dialogues and everything will happen. This is where you will choose the battles to fight. Uh, this is where you will manage your provinces. This is your main screen, let's say the higher level between the battles. Uh, this main map right now you only see the province you own, showed in uh, this turquoise color, and uh, the three provinces bordering with it that uh, you still don't know anything about. If you click on them, province owner unknown, for example. Uh, in here there are a lot more provinces, but uh, you didn't discover them yet. Uh, when This is the main map, as we said. When you zoom in the main map, uh, you move onto this um, 3D view, let's say it's again 2D, but uh, uh, that George made uh, quite some time ago now, and uh, we still really like it. You see in the detail all the type of settlements. This is a fort, this is a military camp, a village, a fortress, a hamlet, a town. This is like a no settlement. Uh, this 3D map also has day, night and cycle. As you can see. But back to the main... I, I, I think strategically this one is a little more usable, even if I like to, to switch between the two maps all the time. Um, this is the province you control. This is the panel I'm spending the last month on, because it's really important. This is the panel where you control everything about your province. Uh, in this panel, by clicking here, for example, you get a description of each statistic, the value, the modifiers, you get here also in detail each modifier that you might have. Uh, here you can distribute your forces. Uh, how it works? There are like two, three important values in military terms. And it is attack that you use when you are attacking or when you are moving your troops uh, to fight into another province. Defense that you are using when you are attacked or during a riot, for example. And authority. Authority, it's instead uh, the statistic that is keeping the rebellion level under control in that province. The higher the authority, the easier it is that you keep uh, rebellious activity lower. And uh, the lower rebellious activity, the higher the chance that uh, nothing will happen in, during a given turn. Uh, if you use this indicator, you can distribute your soldiers. This way, you put all of them up to 25%, but the minimum is 20 in this case because attack was 20. You put all of them into the uh, authority, so they work as guards. If you do this, you take them away from authority and you add them to the military, so they work as soldiers. You're, you're in, the amount of units that you have in this game is limited. Um, you start the campaign with the basic idea that uh, you have a ragtag army, uh, not that many resources to use, and therefore you need to, to do what, what you, with what you have. Um, let, let's try, for example, now to set it all to authority. We could do everything. Uh, here is a corporal turn asking for to confirm. Yes, for six turns you cannot change it anymore. Then the taxes. Taxes do influence, of course, the gold production, but also the happiness. The higher the taxes, the lower the happiness, and vice versa. We we keep them to the minimum. So right now, it's a close to ideal initial setup, at least for to quell the rebellion in the province, high authority, at least decently high. Happiness is not very high, but it's as, as high as we could get now. Uh, that will prevent rebellion uh, to skyrocket too fast. Also, we have our headquarter here that is lowering further the rebellion value. Uh, the headquarter here, it means uh, that uh, Sergeant Heimer, your main character, is stationary in this problem. Then uh, let's assign a governor. These are your governors. These ones are all uh, procedurally generated, and uh, you can see a preview on the in here of what each of them is providing. They also provide other things, but not all of them can be uh, highlighted. If you want to inspect your officer in detail, 
you just open up this panel, the officer panel, I said all, all of them they are randomly generated so they changed both the portrait and the statistic and uh, we inspect for example this one and uh, okay uh, right now it's not working the trait but you see that they are like also some different traits they have a different faction um, some of them uh, are not yet known in terms of loyalty and none of them are in this case you can investigate them, you can bribe them in order to increase their loyalty, you can execute them if you think that uh, they are unloyal and they can be dangerous, or you can fire them. Uh, one thing that I really like about executing them is that, for example, if you execute one officer and you succeed and he doesn't manage to escape, um, for a, a certain amount of turns all the other officers will be more loyal, because they are shitting their pants best. Let's try to investigate this one. Okay, the chance is pretty low. Let's do like this. Uh, let's pick one uh, that has a good amount of bonus to the authority and happiness. Okay. So you see, right now, the governor is providing a plus 11%. The guard distribution that went before, plus 20. The headquarter, plus 15. And the fact that it's a military camp, a plus 5. This is, military camp is the type of settlement that we have. In this case, this is this camp. So, um, these are all the statistics that you can inspect of your province. Down, let's, let's let it turn. Go. But funny, there is this bug that makes disappear the, the UI once then. I think it's something really stupid that I did at some point, and uh, <laughs> I need to deactivate. Uh, this is a random event, for example. Turbulent times. It means that uh, every given amount of turns, there is a chance that something random happens. Um, it can be positive, it can be negative. This one is uh, considered to be neutral, you see it from the marker. This one would be a positive, neutral and negative. Uh, the next event, the next time that there is a chance for an event to happen, there is a much higher chance for this event to happen. So we are quite sure that the next time something will happen. We don't know when, but let's say between 5 and 8 turns, something will happen. Uh, we can check the news. This is where the news are reported. There is an abundance of food in Kalame here, that is our province. Still the rebellious activity increased. Let's spend one turn. Happiness increased. Let's go and check the province. Happiness is increasing pretty well. Rebellious activity. Yeah, nothing is happening in the province. This is a okay. As said, an appropriate song spreading. We can check it. This is an effect of a rebellious activity that is still pretty low. But for example, you see right now this event that happened that is like a, a soft event. It's considered not to be anything that bad. For a couple of turns, uh, rebellious activity is increased by two and uh, authority is uh, decreased by two because there are... S <laughs> this is... Sir, there is someone in the province that, well, that seems, that seems to sing songs that make fun of your person. If the information are correct, uh, the most popular one is uh, Can Heimer see it while peeing? I'm sorry, sir. This is stuff that can happen. This is like pretty mild, so it's fine. Uh, the governor here is in charge. Now we can try to investigate the governor. We have a slightly higher chance because we are using the province police, let's say, to do that. Uh, we can close this one. Let's turn it over. No. Okay. Uh, it didn't work, but the officer only decreased by 0%. So. And uh, there is a bad moon rising. Are you familiar with the Credence Clearwater Revival song? I see a bad moon rising. Okay, this is obviously inspired by that one. Uh, luck, luck is influencing every percentage roll, let's call it, uh, that happens during the game. So for the next five turns, we will have a negative impact of 15%. That's quite a lot. Uh, let's talk with the scout guy. Okay, the scout guy is telling us that the investigation failed. We don't know anything, we don't know the loyalty, we don't know if the guy is tearing up troubles, we don't know how much money we are losing uh, uh, in corruption. Uh, with that. Then, let's give a try to some first military action. We send the scouts. Uh, this is These brownish icons are still belonging to the old UIs, but we keep them there still. Like I, I, I didn't get here to 
uh, change them. Also those uh, arrows, we, uh, they're going to be 3D most probably. But, okay, we send the scouts from Kalame here to Felber. Uh, this is an unscouted province, it's going to take one turn and we have a scout chance of success of 45%. Send them. Here we have the action, the military action, action in progress. From here to here, blah blah blah. As you can see, I'm quite a an information freak. Like I, I like tooltips. I like tooltips to tell me what what is happening, what I'm ordering. Here something else happened. I'm still there. Let's change turn. Okay. Oh, okay. An officer is asking to join us. Yannis Frater. We can. We have. Yeah, we have enough. We can hire. Let's hire. Life is a box of not that original, I guess. Yeah, but... Okay, we have the scout report. Papa, brilliant success. Uh, right now, I need to balance out because 90% of the time, somehow the scouts get butchered. This time it didn't happen, so we have the full information on the province of Felden. We know what enemies we will fight. This panel here still needs like some work, but we know the province attack, the province defense. Uh, the promise production and uh, all the resources that are going to be in there. We can close it. Can we? Now we can redistribute them and now we go military. Let's say we sacrifice a bit of control. Remove Ingvar. We want a military officer. This one, this one, this one is giving plus 12% that it, it's the maximum for a base officer. Uh, the officer, they do level up. Uh, right now, these ones are regenerated ones. This one is like a tire 2. As you can see, the maximum level for um, um, for the stars, for a statistic, it's uh, 4 stars. This is a level 1 officer, so 3 stars. I think you can't have yet at start uh, level 3 officers, but they do have 5 stars. Each star is providing a different amount of bonus. But, okay. Then something else. The officer battle board. These ones are the officers that you take to battle. These officers will influence the values uh, of your towers in battle. So, uh, Fontron we cannot take with us because he's already a governor. And uh, that's okay. So here we can see the statistics. For example, we had Ugo Baizadeh, plus 4% damage, this is the total modifier that our towers will have, and this is something additional that his perks are going to provide. We can take up to 3 of them, then we take Gorgos Hoopon, and we take uh, uh, this one that is giving a bonus, Bernard Klutz, that is giving a bonus to uh, range and... Uh, uh, fire rate. Okay, this is this is our battle board. Then we are basically ready to. We know everything about Felbert, we don't know anything about Gibson yet, or anything about Frauds, but about Felbert, and then we go. And then what we are doing is basically we are sending our troop fight for the province. We have a combat, a very positive combat modifier. That means that we will have some solid bonuses in that. Bam! Okay, here we go. This is the pre-battle panel. These are the battle modifiers. That means uh, the difference between uh, the enemy defense and our attack. As uh, we are much stronger, we have a bonus to morale, we have uh, a bonus to the health of our towers, uh, we have more time between the waves, and uh, the enemies are slightly slower. Then uh, Heimer doesn't have enough skills because it didn't level up yet to provide any bonuses to damage or to morale but his officer the ones that we did pick in the battle board before do have it so here is the total our towers will have plus four percent damage plus five percent range plus six percent fire rate and plus 33 percent morale that is quite a lot then because of the province that we are using we do have a bonus to stone production because our province has a high production of stones. And uh, that, that's basically it. So we stop talking and uh, we start fighting. I don't like them. I don't like Ia either. 
can't even think of someone that I like. I, I love the, the way I heard. This is finally the battlefield. Uh, several of you are already familiar with the battlefield because uh, the beta on uh, Itch.io or on Game Jolt has been downloaded like 300 times now and uh, a lot of you did play it on AGX so I I'm not going to do the full playthrough here. I'm just like for whoever is not familiar what we are doing here is like fighting a hybrid of tower defense and um, real-time strategy basically. Enemies will be coming, our workers are building towers, but I, I made already, there is another video on our YouTube channel only about, uh, it, it got rabies, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, only about, uh... okay, I, I think there is a little bug here because it's not being built somehow. I need to check, like, uh, when I do plug together the battle maps and the main campaign, uh, at the moment the battle map is uh, prepared for being a single map beta, so there, there are some issues, yeah. Arn is currently that. <laughs> okay, but that that's that's more or less what Empires in Ruins is about, so like, Usona right now, it's shaping up, it's, um, it's, we're putting together things uh, uh, right right now for example you didn't see any of the dialogue let me restart a second um, the main map uh, so that I can show you a, a little bit of the um, of the dialogue for example uh, if I remember right uh, I had a shortcut to start a dialogue shift P yeah exactly this is the intro dialogue uh, to the um, to the game this is Corporal Frederick Turk that is going to be basically your victim and uh, subordinate and this is you, this is Sergeant Hans Heimer. This is like how, for example, a conversation goes on. You you have multiple choices sometimes and things to do. Uh, let's not take the tutorial now. Right, right now this dialogue should not be here. This dialogue is like when uh, the game, the full campaign starts, but I did want to show you a bit of it, and uh, let let me see. I, I I cannot promise anything because I don't know if uh, it's fully plugged in. Uh, but the research center. Okay, when you get to the research center, this is the guy in charge of the research that is Gottfried Megla. Heimer doesn't really like Gottfried Megla. Mm, Gottfried Megla doesn't really like uh, Hans Heimer. So the dialogues are really always pretty elegant. Okay, blah blah blah, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, right now, only this uh, of the panels has uh, real icons for research. We have all of them ready, but uh, right now they still have the old placeholder. But uh, this is research, how it's done. So these here in the middle, <sighs> okay, this is still a temporary UI element, but I can show you. This is showing what the benefits are and on the sides you do unlock things unlocking things usually means uh, towers uh, castle uh, production building okay. so that that was basically about what I wanted to show you today it's already almost 20 minutes that I'm talking so that, that should be more than enough and uh, I hope you like how it's shaping up and uh, I, I cannot wait really to, to show you soon something looking more like a, a real coherent gameplay session in, uh, in the main map. Guys, it was a pleasure and I, I'd rather go back to work now. Have a good day, bye!